So the team at Evernode have been hard at work. And obviously, since the launch of the Evernode Layer 2 on the Zahao network, there has been a huge spike in interest in Evernode, Zahao, and the greater XRP ecosystem. But ever since the initial launch, you know, <laughs> things didn't proceed as smoothly as planned. There have been tons of issues and bugs relative to people having problems actually doing things like registering their host and having their Evers essentially being held hostage on a host that they can't use. Things have been happening such as hosts actually successfully being registered and created, but they're not actually sending any transactions to the heartbeat hook to the main network that confirms the host is online and active, so they're never actually being rewarded for their efforts. All right, we're having tons of dead hosts on the market right now. We're even having hosts that are functioning and are working. However, it seems that for short periods of time, they're not generating rewards despite being fully online and despite the Zahao network being fully functional, they're still not generating any rewards. All right. So even if you have done everything correctly, your host is still having issues generating as many fees as it should be for the amount of time it's running. If you're dealing with any of these issues, the Evernode team has heard your voice and they are working to correct this. All right. On January 22nd, the Evernode team actually came out and released a thread on X actually explaining the situation for a lot of this and getting into the technicalities of things, as well as going on to lay down the law in terms of what adjustments that they're going to be making in order to remediate and resolve all these issues. All right. If you have a host that currently is online and is working, but it's not generating as much Evers rewards as it should be, and currently a host, as of the time I'm making this video, currently a host averages about 50 Evers a day. But if you were dealing with this heartbeat transaction issue, then when your host would try to ping the heartbeat hook, it wouldn't make it into the next ledger and it would just be queued and stay in that queue. If that transaction stayed queued up too long, then the transaction would fail and then the hook would actually disqualify your host from that moment that hours rewards, despite your host being online and actually functioning for that hour. To remediate something like that, they're going to be lengthening the amount of max time that a host is willing to wait for a transaction to be confirmed before it cancels the transaction. The second thing they're going to do to actually future-proof the platform is to raise the amount of fees that a host can pay for a transaction in order to ensure that the transaction goes through, in order to ensure that it has priority. This will help in the case that the Zahao network becomes congested. This hasn't been an issue so far, but this is really more so just future proofing it. Another thing they're doing to remediate these current issues is they're going to be adding additional host endpoints. All right. So when you're setting up a host and even with your current host, you're going to be able to change the Zahao endpoint that you're using rather than everybody connecting to the same endpoint. That way, even if your host is having issues with the default endpoints, you can quickly just switch over to an alternative to make sure that all your hosts are still active and they're still generating rewards. Another thing I really like that the Evernode team is doing is that they're going to be changing the host registration process. So currently in the host registration process, how it goes is once you run the Evernode installation software, in order to set up your host, it's going to charge you a 17.6 ZA fee to register, to have enough gas for the next three months, and to build the trust line for Evernode. Additionally, it currently takes a 500 Evers fee on top in order to get that host registry NFT and to register that address to be an Evernode host, to register your VPS server or your physical Linux server to be an Evernode host. But the problem is, you can go through this entire process and you can run into an error at the final step. And at the final step, you may still have an issue registering. So as a result, now the Evernode software thinks you have a host registered, but really you have no access to it. You're unable to do anything. You're unable to generate rewards. So you're essentially stuck in limbo. They're going to be updating the registration hook soon enough. 
to ensure that if you did fail a registration, you're going to be able to get your Evers back. So what it's going to do is if you register a host, it's going to hold your Evers until your host successfully pings the Evernode network. All right. So it sends the first heartbeat to the heartbeat hook saying that, hey, I'm alive. I'm a new host on the network. But if your note can't ping the network for any reason whatsoever, you can deregister it. So I don't recommend doing this right now. I want you to actually wait until the update comes out. Wait on either their message on Twitter or wait on me to update you directly just to confirm that this process has changed. But once it does, you will be able to either update your Evernode system manually or if you enabled auto update when you were setting up your Evernode, it will update itself. But basically, once this happens, all you'll need to do is run the script sudo Evernode uninstall and that's going to remove the Evernode host software from your system, but it's also going to deregister you from the platform. So even if you weren't able to ping the heartbeat hook, even if you weren't able to get your node fully up despite paying the fee and having it actually be online, but it's not registering, you'll be able to get your full 500 Evers back. That way you're not losing any money and you'll be able to restart from the beginning as if it was a completely fresh install. The 500 Evers will simply be refunded to the Zahao address that you sent the Evers from initially. So this is what they've done so far, all right? They've already updated the infrastructure in order to make connections more stable and hosts can already choose their alternative Zahao node domain if they're having issues with the default one. The second thing that they're going to be releasing today is that hook logic that's going to refund you that full 500 Evers if you deregister without a successful heartbeat. So if you registered an Evernode but you're still not getting a heartbeat after waiting that 5-10 minutes after waiting one hour, then later today, you will be able to uninstall the software with that little script. Remember, sudo Evernote uninstall. And then all you'll have to do is simply register again because you'll get your 500 Evers back. I'm not sure if you're going to get your 17.6 ZAW back though. The Evernote team didn't comment on that, so I would assume no. But currently, the price of ZAW is low, so, you know, it won't break your bank to get that back. And at least you can get your full 500 Evers back, which is the real investment here. So Monday next week, this is what they're going to actually be implementing, all right? They're going to ensure that hosts retry failed heartbeat transactions throughout the whole hour. And the second thing that they're going to do, they're going to change the type of transaction that the heartbeat invokes. They'll change it to an invoke hook transaction, which all you really need to know is that it's a lighter and cheaper way to poke the hook. So it's going to be less expensive over a long period of time for your node. So this is all win-wins for node operators. Another thing that they're going to add next Monday is that if an install fails after your 500 Evers is paid, but before you actually get your registration NFT from the Zahao network, all you will need to do is just run that install script again in order to restart the process from the point of failure. So you won't have to resend the 500 Evers in this situation either. Another thing that's going to happen is they will implement that change in max transaction fee so that you can take advantage of it in a situation that the Zahao network becomes congested. It hasn't been congested so far, but they're thinking more so never say never. We don't know what the future can bring, considering all the pandemonium and mayhem involving the amazing and successful launch of Evernode thus far. So now I want to actually talk about something that I know you guys are all asking me about, which is your actual hosting rewards and how you calculate it, okay? So currently, only 30% of the Evernote supply is actually circulating, and the remaining 70% is still left to actually be generated. The only way to generate Evers is by running a host. So that's a really good thing for hosts, all right? So the total supply of Evers is 51,609,600, okay? For the first six weeks, so only about one week has passed now since Evernote has been out, a week and a half, because this video is going to be coming out on Wednesday. But 
Currently, for the next four and a half weeks, the Evernode network will be releasing 5,120 Evers an hour, 24-7 every single day for the next four and a half weeks, all right? The first epoch, which we are currently in, is going to last for about six weeks in total. And as I said, the way the Evernode network works is a lot like how Ethereum and Bitcoin work, which is that it's deflationary over time in terms of the rewards that it gives. After that initial six weeks, the amount of rewards that the Evernode network will be releasing is going to get cut in half. So it's going to go down from 5,120 Evers every single hour to 2,560 Evers every single hour. And this will last for 12 weeks. After that, it's going to go down. It's going to get cut in half once again. And it's going to go down to 1,280 Evers every single hour for about 24 weeks. I'm not going to dive into all 10 epochs because you're not here for that. Just keep that in mind when you're considering running a host because you got to make sure that running a host is actually financially viable for you. And it's the goal of the Evernode team to ensure that running a host is always profitable or at least par for the host operator. That way they don't shut down their hosts and reduce the actual decentralization of the network. Currently, that 5,120 Evers that the network generates every single hour is divvied up evenly to every single host, no matter how much work your host is doing. So long as your host is on the network, your host will get an equal share of that 5,120 Evers an hour. So if you go on the dashboard for Evernote hosts, I'm going to leave that in the description for you as well. In the description, I will also have some links to airdrops and other stuff. If you could click it, I would be super grateful. I don't even want to get into shilling right now because I'm like, I'm, I'm in the mood. I'm getting it. But, <laughs> but if you go to the Evernote dashboard, you can see the amount of hosts that are currently active on the Evernode network. All right. Each moment lasts approximately one hour. That's why each moment is relative to one hour and each moment is relative to 5,120 evers at the current reward rate. So basically, all you have to do is take the reward. So currently, we're generating 5,120 evers an hour, and we're just going to divide it by the current amount of hosts. As I'm making this video, the current amount of hosts is 2,529. So that means each host in this hour is going to generate about 2.02 .02 evers or 48 evers every 24 hours. Obviously, that number can change as time passes on. Let's say we go on to an hour from now and Clevernode, a node as a service platform, gets contacted by a couple clients who are looking to spin up an additional 10 nodes. So since we have these additional 10 nodes on the network in the next moment, in the next hour, now those 10 nodes are reducing the total amount of evers that is being allocated to each node. But this is where things get a little tricky because the Evernode token actually has utility. The whole utility of evers is that first off, developers who are actually using the Evernode network and the Evernode platform, they will pay a fee in evers to those hosts that they are using in order to run their decentralized applications. But the second thing is that actually running a host requires Evers as well. A lot of these nodes that you'll see in the DeFi space, they don't require you holding the native token in order to run a host. Instead, they prioritize really heavy infrastructure, and then they compensate you for that in the native governing token. However, Evernode is different because with Evernode, it really doesn't matter at least for now, subject to any changes in the network. But to make any changes in the first place, it's also going to require Evers as well, along with that proposal. But at least for now, how it works is whether you're running a spec'd out host with 100 instances, or whether you're running a very basic host, both parties make the exact same amount in rewards. That's why the Evernote team even came out themselves and suggested that people in the beginning of the network run multiple hosts. Why? 
because it's extremely conducive and lucrative to do so. All right. Because the value of the Evernote token at the initial launch of the network was extremely cheap and undervalued. And as a result, you were able to spin up a lot of hosts at a undervalued price. Meanwhile, those hosts were generating insane rewards because the amount of hosts on the network were very low. So a lot of people were making back their returns on these hosts they were spinning up in a day, in two days, in five days. Okay. And it's still going to be profitable to spin up new hosts. However, you got to be aware and you got to be conscious of the market conditions and the conditions of the Evernote token that you are spinning up these hosts in. Say you are someone who is host farming. Say you are someone who has multiple hosts. I mean, sure, you're going to have some people who are going to guilt trip you over this, but I don't want to get into that because I don't really care. Because if you're trying to do this as a business, like people like Clevernote are doing, if you're trying to do this like a business, like many independent hosts are doing, then you will inevitably have to spin up multiple hosts because it just makes logical sense to do so. But you may not want to spin up a lot of hosts when you clearly see that the Evernote token is rising exponential levels. All right, you may want to actually put your assets elsewhere or do something else with your allocation. I'm not going to suggest anything because I don't want you claiming that's what I told you to do. But you may want to wait when market conditions are looking poor and the Evernote token is at a premium discount. Why? Because then spinning up new hosts is once again conducive, and then you can fight against that dilution of the Evernote rewards to your current hosts. So the winners in this game, in my opinion, are those who are flexible and adaptive, and people who are both maintaining not only their current hosts, but they're also keeping an eye on the market as well, and they're actively participating in the market because that's when they'll be able to not only keep their hosts optimized and make sure that they're constantly generating rewards, but they'll also be able to extract the maximum extractable value from the Evernode token and from those rewards that they are generating and from the overall market. That's why when a lot of you were asking me in the comments, oh, how much do you make a month? How much do you make a month? How much do you make a month? I didn't even bother replying because I know that if I give you a certain number in US dollars, that's really subject to the fluctuations of the almighty market. That's not something I can say. So even if I tell you that you're making such and such today, the market could prove me wrong, not even two days, not even a week from now, because this is crypto. So you got to be smart and you got to decide what is your risk tolerance, okay? How much of this Evernote token do you actually want to keep in Evers? And how much do you need to actually, first of all, sustain your host? Second of all, sustain your operations. And third of all, make sure you're actually generating a profit so your time isn't being wasted. If this is what you're doing for a business venture. Currently, you see people making anywhere from $30 to $50 a day from Evernote hosting her node. But that is today. We don't know where the price of the Evernote token will go, so you can't calculate it based on that. If you want to calculate your rewards on a long or medium term, you have to denominate it in Evers currently. You simply have to because that's the only way it makes sense. And then based on the market conditions, you have to see if that US dollar value for your Evers, for the rewards that you're generating for your efforts, is worth it to you. So that's basically the math on how to actually calculate your hosting re rewards. And remember, it's always susceptible to change every single hour, not every day, every single hour, because the Evernode network does include new nodes into the regime, into the rewards every single hour based on the moment count and the moment size. So that's pretty much everything. I covered the epochs. I covered the amount of rewards that you generate per hour. I covered how the rewards are going to change over the long term. I also covered how you can estimate and plan for the future based on what the Evernote token is doing today, the amount of hosts currently on the network, and how you can combat it in order to optimize your work and business flow. I hope this helps you guys so much. I am going to be putting out lots more content on Evernode, but just to let you guys know, I do put out content on other things as well. All right. I know this is called the XRP podcast, 
but this is a podcast created by an independent member of the XRP community, me. And I believe that the success of XRP is also contingent on the success of the greater crypto ecosystem. So I will talk about other projects that I believe are conducive to the success and benefit of the entire industry. I am Andrew the XRP Maxi. I will say what I want to say, and I will keep bringing you more amazing content. Thank you guys for the support so, so much. I really appreciate it. God bless you all. Be well, be safe, take care.